Thank you for everybody for being here today. Uh, I will go ahead and welcome you to the um, risk financial and risk management committee. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could please call the roll. Imperial Beach representative. Here. La Mesa representative. Here. Chula Vista representative. Here. We have a quorum. Mayor Paloma, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Please stand. Your hand over your heart. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice and justice for all. Madam Clerk, do we have any public comment? There are no non-agenda public comments. Outstanding. Um, do we have any items that have been added or withdrawn uh, from the agenda? No, we don't. Okay. We will now move to the first item is the approval of the April 13th meeting minutes. Uh, do we have a motion? Go for the minute. Go ahead and second that. All those in favor of approving the April 13th, 2023 meeting minutes, I say aye. 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 All those opposed? Item carries unanimously. I have seen. That oh. was in here. Uh, we will have a uh, two members went ahead and approved, and then we have one abstention. We will now move to item number two, review of the treasurer's report for period ending 331-23. Mr. Washington. Thank you, uh, Chairman um, Mayor McCann. Uh, I'll be presenting the treasurer's report for uh, the fiscal period ending March 31st, 2023. Next slide, please. So this is a treasurer's report reflecting our year-to-date performance up through the end of the March 31st, 2023 period. Uh, overall, our financial results we reported here today: six million six hundred twenty-six million um, dollars in net revenue, and nine hundred. I'm sorry, five hundred ninety-seven point three million in our total total operating expenses, landing at a net position of twenty-nine point one uh, million. So this is a comparison of our actual results compared to our budget. And overall, uh, in terms of net revenue, we were on par with what we expected for our budget year to date. Uh, expenses, I'll note, were uh, about 17, about $18 million lower than we budgeted for, which really supported uh, the achievement of our net position to the tune of about $18 million above where we uh, expected to land year to date based on our budget. Next slide, please. This is a, a, comparis a comparison of our active results to our pro forma. Uh, just a reminder for the public and the committee that our budget is significantly informed by our projections. And as you can see, uh, our results are pretty similar when we compare our actual results to the uh, projections here to date for March 31st, 2023. I would like to point out um, the Operating expenses, but the total expenses were down primarily as a result of some credits that we uh, experienced from KISO related transactions. So, again, uh, we are pretty much on par uh, with projections, with the exception of our net position being higher than what we what we projected for the year to date period. Next slide, please. So in terms of a snapshot, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner of this slide, our contribution to our reserves. Uh, our goal year to date was 107 million. However, we achieved uh, uh, 29 million uh, for the contribution into reserves year to date. Um, as you look at the lower left-hand uh, corner of this slide projection, it really shows our access to liquidity. So this figure is a reflection of our actual unrestricted cash, 
we achieve for the period in terms of contribution to our reserves, and then what we have access to on our line of credit with JP Morgan. Upper right hand corner of this slide is a reflection of our debt, which is pretty much uh, the outstanding balance that we had on the line of credit with JP Morgan Bank. Uh, and then with respect to where we landed with our cash position relative to our reserve target, we were 37% of what we are targeting for our uh, reserve uh, balances. Next slide. So this slide again, as a reminder, this is a reflection of our year-to-date performance with regard to uh, pursuit of our target goals, again, reflecting our unrestricted cash and access that we had, uh, the line of credit year to date through March 31st, 2023. Next slide, please. This is in addition to what we typically would present on the treasurer report. We added this, I believe, in our last treasurer's update to really give us a sense of where we are with regard to opt-outs and particip participation among our member cities. So overall, on average, we are at about a 96% participation rate, which is uh, said differently, a 4% overall opt-out rate among all of our jurisdictions, along all among all classes of our, our rate player, rate payer uh, portfolio. So still continue to perform well with regard to participation rates, but nevertheless, it's something that we want to make sure that we uh, have visibility on. Uh, as we continue to uh, provide services to our members of our agencies. Next slide. Um, uh, Treasurer uh, Washington, go back to the... Uh, so again, when, when do we believe the National City and San Diego County will become active? Because it says that they don't have any active users right now. So this is this is through... Um, and help me, help me out here, uh, Tim. I think this is through April, if, if that's not correct. And that was during the time when we were actually um, ramping them on. And so in April, they would have been fully ramped on. We'll see the actual results of their participation uh, in that uh, in that for uh, the treasurer at our next treasurer's update. Outstanding. Thank you. Cool. Next slide, please. Madam Clerk, do we have any comments from the public? There are no public comments. Okay. And uh, the board, do we? Mayor Curie. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Perry. I just wanted to remind again, this is a, a recommendation to this committee uh, for receiving file of the treasurer's report through March 31st, uh, 2023 year to date, that we would advance it to uh, the board uh, for either the consent calendar or the regular calendar. Understood. Mary Gary. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a quick question on the Kaiso credits. I maybe it's because I'm new. I'm not as familiar with those. Are those going something we're going to expect every year, or those? Can you elaborate a little bit more on those? Yes, that's a great question, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you for the question. So typically, with the Kaiso, oftentimes we have to post collateral in certain. In, in certain periods for transactions that are handled by the CAISO. And those credits are essentially a reflection of where we overpaid for some of those resources because the, the actual calculation for the CAISO transactions, it sort of winds over a matter of months because they'll do a portion of sort of the true ups uh, in one month and in previous months, they you know fine tune those true ups. And at the end of the final calculation of those transactions that will oftentimes generate either a uh, need for us to pay additional uh, funds to the CAISO or they'll return those funds uh, to us. So this particular in, in year to date, we've pulled back from the CAISO uh, about 18 to 20 million, I think, in credits that we're ready to pull those back. So that's that's where the, the sort of the origination of those credits are coming from. So those variances, like the amount being 17 and change, million um that could be very depending on what the needs are the year okay yeah, exactly okay thank, thank you so much great so uh 
unless we have any more questions or comments, uh, we will go ahead and receive and file the treasurer's report and uh, put it on for the uh, future board. We will now move to item number three, approval of the San Diego Community Power Investment Policy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are presenting to uh, the Finance and Risk Management Committee a recommendation uh, for approval to advance this policy to the board at our, at our upcoming board meeting for board of uh, Next slide, please. So just by way of background, we presented the framework for this policy back at the Finance and Risk Management Committee uh, in March of this year. So after receiving feedback from the committee, we are now moving forward or bringing forward an actual draft of the policy. So just as a reminder to this committee, this policy was informed by a review, a review of similar policies from our uh, peers, other CCAs. We also looked at investment policies uh, and did a comparative analysis of their policies that also informed this policy. And then overall, uh, best practices, including the model practices guide that is uh, uh, assembled by the California uh, Community Choice Association. This policy essentially will lay out our objectives, the types of investments that we will pursue under this policy, those investments that are prohibited by this policy, and then we lay out uh, controls that will govern um, the, our investments in accordance with this policy, and then the uh, lastly, the reporting requirements that we'll report out to this committee uh, on periodically. Next slide. So this slide is, is essentially a reflection of our overarching objectives uh, that we hope to achieve with our uh, investment policy, essentially making sure that we make investments that will allow us to preserve our principles. So that objective is a safety objective, then followed by uh, an objective of care where we will uh, manage our investments in accordance with prudent investment standards that's governed by the California uh, government code. Liquidity makes sure that as we invest, we retain adequate or sufficient liquidity to make sure that we can continue to meet our day-to-day -day operating needs and then ultimately, we hope to achieve investments that will provide a rate of return uh, on those investments. Next slide. This slide, uh, as, as we presented in the framework, really lays out the types of investments that we uh, look to pursue in accordance with our investment policy. Again, as it's informed by uh, California codes, uh, and you can see uh, essentially most of these investments are relatively uh, relatively safe investments and low risk for the most part. Next slide, please. And of those acceptable uh, investments, these are some of just the parameters that will determine how long we invest, uh, how much of our total portfolio will be uh, allocated to these investments. And then it also lays out uh, for the sake of managing concentration, who we invest with and what percentages will invest across these types of investments that we that we believe to be acceptable. And then some of the some of the ratings that will also govern the selection of those investments. Next slide, please. This slide is a reflection or representation of those investments that we will certainly avoid uh, given the amount of risk that may be associated with these types of investments and are not in alignment with what our overall objectives are uh, for our investments. Next slide, please. So internal controls and reporting, uh, I'd like to point out that we um, added some additional controls on ourselves just to make sure that we're, you know, exceeding what are believed to be best practices and also contributes to the soundness and safety of the investments that we uh, intend to pursue. 
So we will make sure that we bring back to this committee as well as the board an annual review of the investment policy for updates and revisions as necessary. Uh, we'll include uh, this invest, our investments will be included in our annual financial audit. So there will be that level of, of controls over our investment. And then from a reporting standpoint, um, under the government code, under the California government code, an annual and quarterly reporting is required. Uh, but we'll, we'll do a monthly report of these investments and they will become an integral part of our uh, monthly treasurer's report as we, as we move forward uh, with investments. And then we went, we added some additional controls just to make sure that we'll be we're being uh, with our, our investments and to make sure that they're safe and that there's no uh, other outlying objectives that might feed into uh, adding unnecessary risk to those uh, investments. So the sort of the, the the bolt icon is a reflection of those additional. Of things that we've imposed on ourselves with regard to a tr internal controls and reporting to making, you know, assuring that we have uh, a safe and sound investment policy that is guided by safe practices. Next slide. And that concludes uh, my report, uh, my presentation of the investment policy. Thank you. Uh, do we have any speakers from the board? Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers from the public? There are no public comments. Okay. Uh, this is a recommendation for the board approval. I'll go ahead and make the motion to recommend the investment policy uh, board. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item is approved unanimously. We now move to item number four. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm presenting in, in conjunction with our finance team, our senior finance manager, Tim Magalmont, and our financial analyst, Chris Doe. We are presenting for uh, presentation and discussion a preliminary draft of our fiscal year 2024 operating budget uh, for a finance risk management committee. This presentation will also be made uh, to the board and will incorporate any uh, discussion items or any uh, suggestions or recommendations as an outcome of the presentation to the Finance and Risk Management Committee. Next slide. So just in general, our budget practices, uh, we have six guiding principles that inform the management of our budget. Uh, first and foremost is to make sure that it's responsible uh, and that it is a sustainable budget. Uh, secondly, that we maintain sufficient funds to ensure that we have adequate financial resources to continue our operation and deliver on our vision and mission statements for San Diego Community Power. Uh, thirdly, to continue to build our reserves, uh, particularly as we uh, pursue credit ratings and making sure that we have adequate resources to secure uh, our economic future going forward. We want to make sure that our budget uh, is easy to understand, that there are you know, as few complexities as possible, and that they're transparent uh, as they are made available uh, to the public. And then, of course, we want to make sure that we're having open communications with this committee, as well as the board, with regard uh, to the budget, uh, so that we're making sure that we are uh, we have resources to sustain uh, our energy needs so that we can deliver to our constituencies. Uh, and then of course, we wanna make sure that we're print and that we're transparent, I'm sorry, transparent in our reporting. Uh, and again, to make sure that that reporting is easily understood uh, by our public and our constituents. So that's my way of background. Next slide, please. So overall, here are some highlights uh, of the budget for fiscal year uh, 2024. And I'll ask uh, our senior finance manager, Tim McAmont, to present this slide. 
Exactly. Uh, hi, Trevor Cannon, Director of Tim Magawa, Senior Manager at SCCP. Uh, so just a quick highlight of what this budget is delivering for the public. Uh, this budget in fiscal year 24 is the first budget where it's full enrollment for phases one through four. So what that means is full load for the agency, full revenue for the agency. Um, and this is the first time that, that uh, SCCP has had that. Uh, we do plan to grow the agency to scale up to kind of meet that load and full enrollment. Uh, so we're projecting to, or proposing to add uh, 23 staff to go to 59. Um, and there'll be some slides around to compare that. Uh, this budget also still includes uh, abundant outreach to the community. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that disclosed uh, in, in the, and in the detail for the staff report. Uh, and kind of the last thing here is we do want to create, uh, for the first time for SCCP, uh, but very similar to your member jurisdictions, uh, a capital investment plan, uh, which will be similar to the CIPs that uh, all the member jurisdictions have, where we'll be shifting uh, one-time projects and programs over to what we're calling the CIP, which will be a continuing fund uh, in our budget. Thank you, Sam. Thank, thank you, Sam. And that uh, capital investment plan, uh, as uh, our senior finance manager pointed out, we'll make sure that we have continuing funds to operate and deliver on some of the programs that our programs team has worked diligently on identifying and prioritizing for the community based on a community power plan in which we reached out into the community to better understand what uh, they've identified their needs to be and programs to best uh, assist uh, those communities. Next slide. <laughs> Sorry, technical uh, here. So th this slide, uh, just as a reminder, our budget policy lays out for us uh, the timing and delivery of and deliverables as it relates to our budget development. And so we are right on track, uh, as you can see in this slide for the month of May, where we are presenting a draft of the budget to the Finance and Risk Management Committee, which will also preview uh, with the board at our upcoming board meeting. Uh, so the next step after this would be to again come back to the Finance and Risk Management Committee with the final draft of the budget in the month of June uh, and ultimate ratification by the board uh, at the June board meeting so that we are positioned to implement our budget for our next fiscal cycle that begins July 1st, uh, 2024. Next slide. This slide is essentially a high level uh, uh, presentation of the budget uh, with regard to our revenues, our total operating costs, uh, our total expenses, and then where we are projecting for fiscal year 2024 uh, with regard to a net position contribution into our cumulative net position, which is a reflection of our reserves and uh, how that relates with regard to the day's cash on hand from a cash perspective. So this slide also lays the fiscal 2024 proposed budget alongside of our most, our, our most recently amended budget for fiscal year 2023. And it's a clear reflection of our growth as an agency as we uh, roll out our services to the residential uh, component of our member cities and the corresponding expenses associated with that. So we are projecting a net petition for fiscal year 2024 uh, to the tune of one, nearly 1.3 billion in net revenues uh, with uh, 992 million, 9, 9, 971.6 million, I'm sorry, in terms of energy costs, uh, and then the non-energy costs associated with that. So for a total operating expenses of 1 billion, uh, 80 million, point, 18 million, point seven, uh, billion dollars with uh, debt service being our cost of funds for utilization of the Morgan, uh, JT Morgan line of credit, our capital investment program, as there's a slide that will show how those funds will be used Landing us at total expenses of one billion twenty-five million, twenty-five point three million in total expenses. So we are projecting that at the end of fiscal year 2024, we would have accumulated uh 167.4 days cash on hand as it relates to our 
ultimate goal of 180 days cash plan. Next slide. So just highlighting our capital improvement plan. So this slide really lays out the purpose for that plan, and it'll be it'll become a planning document. It'll show how we're using those funds. Uh, that'll be overlaid with the prioritization of programs as it relates to our community power plan. It'll help, uh, it'll provide some indication to the community and looking at their anticipated needs and how we might be able to collaborate with them on meeting some of those needs. Uh, it will spell out short-term program uh, types that'll be supported uh, under the under the capital investment plan. And then also, as we start to look closer at distributed uh, resources planning, this document will provide a guide for uh, us pursuing those. Next slide. So this slide essentially is a reflection of the use of the um, capital investment plan funds. So we've budgeted approximately $4.2 million uh, dollars to support these programs. And this slide is a reflection of the types of programs that we supported uh, by what we budgeted for for fiscal year 2024. And again, this will be a continuing fund type uh, uh, investment plan, meaning that if the funds don't get used in any particular fiscal year period, the balance of the unused funds would roll forward uh, into future years. Next slide, please. So again, just, just to uh, highlight where we are projecting to land with respect to our reserve uh, building. So this slide essentially just recaps really high level where we are projecting to land with regard to a uh, net position for fiscal year 2024, uh, how that'll contribute to our reserve bill to the tune of 467.3 million and where we will uh, land with regard to our uh, days cash on the hand overlaid by our goal of 180 days. So that's what this slide is uh, providing us, as well as sort of a historical build of those reserves over time, as you'll see in the uh, bar chart at the bottom of the uh, slide, where we started in fiscal year 22, or fiscal year 21, uh, 22, fiscal 23, and then project for fiscal year 2024. Next slide, please. This slide essentially breaks down the budget categorically. Uh, so you can see in this slide again, comparing what we're what we're proposing for fiscal year 24, uh, how that compares to fiscal year 2023. And as you can see, uh, the cost of energy uh, that change or that dynamic is, as Tim pointed out previously, it's a reflection of us having all four phases of our uh, implementation plan, all of our member agencies enrolled for a full fiscal cycle uh, for 2024 uh, and the energy resources that will be uh, needed to support that, as well as um, professional services fees, personnel, personnel costs, marketing and outreach, a marketing outreach, I'll highlight that one because we are through uh, our initial enrollment mailing requirements for our member agencies. So that's a cost that actually goes down for fiscal 2024 because those mandatory or required mailings won't be necessary going forward. It would just be an ongoing just awareness and educating uh, the public of and, and essentially making the public and our communities aware of our brand and what we are offering uh, in terms of our services and programmatically our programs as we roll those out. Next slide, please. So this slide, again, just supports the build of our uh, reserves over, over time. Uh, we are targeting to hit our 180 day threshold sometime toward the end of fiscal 2024 or early part of fiscal year uh, 2025. Uh, that's, so that's reflected in this slide. Uh, 
So essentially that's our uh, projected trajectory of reserve building uh, going forward. Next slide. So this slide, essentially, we always like to make sure that we are sort of doing a comparative analysis of where, we're, where we stand with regard to some of our uh, peer uh, agencies or other CCAs. And as you can see, where we land with regard to um, with, with regard to our reserve building and net position compared to other other CCAs. Next slide, please. And this this slide is a reflection, as, as Tim mentioned earlier, we're looking to continue to grow our our team so that we're able to support the growth and uh, provide on the service uh, levels that are deserved and expected by our ratepayers. So this breaks down that 23 head count over the various departments uh, among our team that will ultimately land us with a staff of 59 compared to some of the other CCAs, just to kind of give some indication of where we compare from a staffing standpoint to uh, other CCAs. And most, most, noted, most notably is we are closer in comparison to Clean Power Alliance with regard to headcount, uh, accounts served, uh, load. They currently being positioned as the largest CCA in the state, and we are a close second largest CCA in the uh, in the state. So this slide essentially compares our staffing to the staffing of other CCAs in the state of California. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And similarly, this this slide again just compares our um, where where we stand with regard to uh, our finances and our net revenues, uh, for various energy and non energy costs. And just really kind of shows how we compare to, to other CCAs. Mr. Chair, that concludes my presentation of the proposed budget for fiscal year 2024. Great. Do we have any um, questions or comments from the board? Uh -oh. Member Perry? No. Nope. Uh, Mayor Aguirre. Just a quick overall comment, comment staff, for all of your work. I know it's a lot of work. I just, uh, we just finalized our budget in the city of Imperial Beach. And, you know, it's, um, especially in a growing organization such as ours, there's, there has to be a lot of thought, a lot of forward thinking, right? Forward thinking. Uh, so just wanted to commend you for all your efforts and um, keep cheering us on to reach that 180 day mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank also, you. I want to thank you and your team here, um, Eric, Tim. Um, this is excellent. And again, I also want to uh, echo the statements about the reserves. I think we uh, need to make sure we have fully funded reserves because uh, you never know what will happen in the future. But I think we, our future is bright. We just want to make sure that we're continuing to move forward. With that, uh, do we have any comments from the uh, public? No, there are no public comments. Okay. Uh, I know uh, this is sort of our recommendation for the uh, um, uh, to receive it, but then uh, go ahead and send it on to the uh, full board for the draft fiscal year 2023-24 operating budget. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the motion to do that. Do I have a second? A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion uh, carries uh, unanimously to uh, send this draft budget to the main board for approval. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your work. Um, do we have any uh, announcements from our committee members? Okay. Seeing none, I will go ahead and unless anybody has, staff has any other uh, comments or issues, I will go ahead and then adjourn this committee. So moved. Thank you, everyone. Um, had this been presented?